of a king. Clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Age to age, age to age he stands, and time is in his hand. The beginning and the end, the beginning and the end. The God had three in one, Father, Spirit, and Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. How great is our God! Sing with me how great is our God And all will see how great How great is our God He's the name above all names Name above all names Worthy of all praise My heart will sing our God. He's a name above all names, and worthy of all praise. My heart will sing, how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Thank you, Jeff and uh, worship team for leading us as we've sung and worshiped together today. As one of your pastors and as a chaplain in the Royal Canadian Legion, it is, uh, it is my distinct honor and joy as part of our worship this morning to lead us in a time of remembrance. Remembrance Day, if you're not familiar, was first observed in 1919 throughout the British Commonwealth. It was originally called Armistice Day to commemorate the Armistice Agreement that, that ended the First World War, uh, which took place on Monday, November the 11th, 1918, at 11 a.m. On the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. And as a result, every year on November the 11th, as we know, Canadians right across this beautiful nation from sea to sea to sea pause in a moment of silence and honor and we remember the men and women who have served and continue to serve our beautiful country of Canada during times of war and conflict and peace. And today we remember the more than 2,300,000 Canadians who have served throughout our nation's history. That's a lot of folks. And the 118,000 who have given their lives in defense of our nation and its values. And all of those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice. And so this morning, in preparation of Remembrance Day, which will be taking place this coming Wednesday, 
It is our honor this morning here at Heritage Valley Assembly to just pause as part of our overall worship and thanks to the Lord and to those who have served. For Jesus said, we are to love our neighbor as ourselves, and greater love has no man than he lies, lays down his life for his brother, for his sister. And so we're honored to do so. Over the next few moments, without interruption, uh, we are going to proceed in the following manner, just so that you're knowledgeable and comfortable with what we're about to do. In a moment, we are honored to have a dear friend, a brother in Christ of mine, and a comrade at, at the Royal Canadian Legion, um, Gilles Lapointe, will be coming as our flag bearer. He has served in the Southern Alberta Light Horse, which is a armored division of the Canadian Army. And we thank you, Gilles, for being here today to honor us as we honor those. Following that, I'm going to ask you to please stand as we, as we do sing the anthem, but following that, you can be seated, and he is going to recite a beautiful poem by Colonel John McCrae, Flanders Field, followed by a beautiful video. It remembers the sacrifice of family members and those that send their loved ones into harm's way. Then Herb Betke is going to be honoring us with the last post, two minutes of silence, and then reveille. And then we're going to ask if Harold Eldred, also a brother in Christ, a member of the Royal Canadian Legion, and whose father also served in the United States Air Force, served in Germany, England, across the United States, and in Vietnam. He's going to come. And at that time, I'm going to ask you to stand as he leads us in prayer. So this morning, we're honored to remember at this time of remembrance, those that have given their all. Would you please rise with me as we sing the Canadian National Anthem as our wonderful flag is paraded. seated. Sir, would you please come? In Flanders Field, in Flanders Fields the poppies blow between the crosses row on row that mark one place and in the sky the larks still bravely singing thy scared herd and thy guards below. We are the dead short days ago we lived Felt down, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and knew we were lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with, his, with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us, we, we shall not sleep through, poppy, through poppies grow in Flanders field.
Let's bow our heads and pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, thank you for who you are. Thank you that you are God who gives himself away for the benefits of the people. In your word, you tell us that there is no greater love than someone who lays down their life for a friend. As Remembrance Day draws near, we remember the many who have modeled that love and the incredible sacrifice that they've made for our benefit. Father, we praise you for the many lives that we've laid down as a gift for our freedom. We praise you for the incredible men and women that have fought in conflicts throughout our country's history. For those who have made the ultimate sacrifice, Lord, whether long or not so long ago, we remember and thank you for them. May you continue to sustain their freedom and peace that so bravely paid with the, that they so bravely paid with their life. May you also bless their families and friends, Lord, who are still with us. Help them to remember and grieve their, lo their, lo their loved ones with gratitude and peace, as we trust that you draw near to the brokenhearted and are close to those who mourn. As well, Lord, we praise you for the men and women who are currently serving in our armed forces in whatever capacity that may be. Father, would you grant them the strength to remain steadfast in the season and remind them of how appreciative we are. Protect them by your spirit, Lord. Be their strength and their shield as they continue to fight for freedom and peace to be known throughout our world. And for those who may be struggling in a mentally and with mental illness, depression, anxiety, through PTSD. We ask that you bring healing and hope to them as well. Yes. And to their families, Lord, the many spouses, parents, and children whose loved ones currently serve, we are asking that you would bless them today, God, that you would comfort their hearts, strengthen their bonds with one another, and that you would be done... <clears throat> And your will will be done in their lives. Finally, Father, we praise you for our government and military authorities. Thank you for how you use them to bring peace, prosperity, and security to our lives. Please give them wisdom in this difficult time. Help them to make a decision in line with your will as they lead our nation, both domestically and abroad. We ask that you bless them, Lord, and that through the good work you are doing through them, Glory and honor would be given to your name. Jesus, you told us that there is no greater love than someone who would lay down their lives for their friends. We praise you and you, that you model the <coughs> that you model that first. That you came to die as an ultimate sacrifice, so that may, so that we may have the greatest freedom of all, eternal relationship with you and our loving God. We love you, Lord. We praise you for the sacrifice of our fellow Canadians and give them to your love and give them into your loving care. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you once again for those special guests that have joined with us here today uh, to uh, to honor those that are worthy of honor as we approach Remembrance Day. It's been a joy to be able to celebrate together as a congregation. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, Irv. Thank you, Harold. And each one that have been part of our honoring today. God bless you. We love and appreciate you. Thank you for your participation today. Let's give them uh, a hand of a thanksgiving and applause, shall we? We want to welcome those of you this morning that are joining with us as guests. We are uh, truly blessed to have you here. To those of you who are with us on a regular basis as you meet together with us here at Taylor Seminary, uh, along with our guests, uh, uh, we have to say, uh, fantastic, you made it through the snow. <laughs> Last Sunday was 16 above Celsius. I, I, I'm sure there was grass growing out there on the lawn. And... Uh, and this Sunday, it's what, minus five and uh, piles of snow. Now, the, isn't that truly a little bit of the nation that we live in? 
and Alberta. What did they say? If you don't like the weather, just wait a minute. It'll change. So uh, thank you so, so very much. I know Jill and I, as part of our duties at, of the Royal Canadian Legion, were at Kingsway Mall yesterday for a number of hours and uh, distributing poppies. And I know when I left there about 5.30 or quarter to 6 last night, it took me an hour to get home to the south side. And uh, the roads were treacherous, slippery, and yet the plows were out, but nevertheless. So uh, I say thank you for coming this morning. It's such a joy to have you. If you're joining with us by way of online, YouTube and Facebook this morning, wherever you're viewing from, we are so grateful that you've taken time out of your day to join with us here at Taylor Seminary. And if you're ever in the Edmonton area or in the South Edmonton area, we encourage you to drop in and pay us a personal, uh, personal visit as we come together on Sundays. We are so grateful for the Lord's protection upon us as we be meeting for these last four and a half months. When you see some of the infection rates that keep going up right across our nation and across Alberta, I'm so grateful that the Lord's kept us as a congregation in good health and strength. Aren't you, aren't you glad that his hand of blessing has been upon us and his provision has been, has been given to us, uh, uh, pressed down and overflowing? Let's continue to trust the Lord. And for those that are suffering, that are suffering in body, mind, or soul today, whether it be infection of COVID or others, we will continue to remember them in prayer. As we're thinking of those within our own congregation, uh, I'm able to share this publicly, that Diane DeYoung, who is a part of our congregation, had a heart attack this last Tuesday. I haven't been able to share that publicly until this moment. She went into hospital on Tuesday, but I'm here to say, praise the Lord, she came out yesterday and is resting at home, and she asked that we continue to pray for her. Uh, we're also praying for John, uh, who uh, is also suffering uh, and ha is in hospital as we speak. He is also undergoing uh, treatment and uh, tests, but is resting, and uh, we're thankful to the Lord that he is continuing to watch over him. Well, sometimes these things happen in life, don't they? But aren't you glad that you have a great shepherd that watches over us, not only in our times of illness, but our times of health and our times of prosperity and peace. God is with us no matter what. Praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we welcome each and every one of you here today. I want to be able to say and announce that uh, due to the, uh, the warm reception of our hymn sing that took place two Saturdays ago, and what a delightful time it was. Uh, as we met together here at Taylor Seminary, that uh, we are following that up with an encore, <laughs> which will be taking place on the first Saturday of December at 7 o'clock right here. It's going to be a Christmas hymn sing. You won't want to miss that if you're able to join with us. We're just asking that you, if you plan to do so, do sign the hard copy uh, uh, attendance list that's in the foyer. Or if you're joining with us online, just go to our website or our email at heritageva.gmail, uh, uh, excuse me, gmail, uh, uh, I'll get it right, heritageva at gmail.com. There we go, at gmail.com. And or call us at 780-699-6315. Also want to just mention that my wife and I are just going to be taking a few days of rest and a little bit of relaxation over the, the next week or so. Uh, and we will not be here next Sunday, but you are in very good hands, as you always are. We have an excellent leadership team here at our church. It doesn't depend on one person. We come together as a team. And so we're looking forward to a time of, of uh, ministry uh, next uh, Sunday. Pastor Matthew will be sharing the word as we continue our series in Philippians, and our worship team will be leading us. We look forward to that. In the meanwhile, if you do have an emergency or pastoral care need, would you please contact our church again at 780-699-6315. If you can't remember the number, just go to our, our website and our team will get right on that and respond to the need in an appropriate and in a timely fashion. So God bless you 
uh, we're looking forward to that. One last announcement, if I might. You see in front of me this beautiful, and I would just want to take a moment to, uh, to hold it up and say thank you to Doug Turner, who was here with us this morning, who beautifully designed this uh, We Remember poster thank you card that uh, some of you have already signed on the margins on Tuesday. We are going to be taking this as a thank you from our congregation to one of our uh, major and significant veterans hospices and extended care units. And it's our way as a church of saying thank you to those who have served over the years in various capacities and just to say, we remember. We remember you. You are not forgotten. And we say thank you. So if you haven't signed this, it'll be out in the foyer following the service. Do take a moment to do that, and we appreciate it. And again, thank you, Doug, for doing such an absolutely beautiful do uh, job on this. We do, we do thank you. God bless you, Doug. Can we give him a word of applause and thank you? God bless you, Doug. We appreciate that so, so very much. Thank you to Marlene for also supplying these beautiful poppies that are in front of us as we continue to uh, uh, prepare our hearts for Remembrance Day this coming Wednesday. On that note, for some of you that desire to attend a Remembrance Day service, as many of you know here in the city of Edmonton, our biggest attendee normal uh, gathering is at the Butter Dome. That is not taking place this year due to COVID. Uh, it is uh, virtually being presented. But if you want to be part of an actual outdoor service, I know that at our legion, the Norwood Legion, we are going to be having an outdoor service uh, by our sepitath. Uh, uh, if you want to gather around 10 o'clock, and uh, you are welcome. Everyone is welcome. We are going to be taking a short and brief, won't be as complicated or elaborate as in previous years due to the nature of the times in which we're living, but do uh, uh, extend and receive this invitation from our hearts if you desire to be part of Remembrance this coming Wednesday at Norwood Legion. God bless you. Would you just turn to someone and say, I remember, I remember. Would you do that? <laughs> And you're saying, I remember what? <laughs> I always say when it comes to memory, if you forget that you forgot, you're still okay. It's when you forget that you forgot, then you're in trouble. <laughs> but thank God we could say, we remember. Well, the story goes that recently three very close friends were having uh, lovely cups of coffee and apple fritters. Uh, together in one of their homes, and they were discussing the state of declining abilities to remember stuff in their day-to-day -day lives. Have you ever had and joked about that? I'm sure you have. Now, as their discussion unfolded, one of the individuals admitted to the others, well, you know, sometimes I go to the refrigerator and I forget what I need by the time I get there. That happened to me the other day. Has that happened to you? I'm sure it has. Well, they all laughed, and then the second person begrudgingly yet honestly confessed, well, when I go upstairs, I can't remember whether I'm going up for something or I'm on my way back down. That happened to me as well, and maybe it's happened to you. And again, they all kind of chuckled, and then the third individual uh, confidently declared, well, <laughs> unlike the two of you, Unlike the two of you, I'm super blessed. I'm super fortunate because I don't have that problem of forgetfulness in my life. And then knocked on the kitchen table. Knock on wood. Knock on wood. I don't have that problem. And then about five seconds later, turned to the others and said, oh, could someone get the door, please? <laughs> I know, that's an old joke. <laughs> but it, it does resonate. Now, you know, as cute as that little uh, story, that little joke simply illustrates, what does it illustrate? Memory can be a tricky thing. <laughs> Memory can be a tricky thing. Yet there are some things in life that we should never forget and must always remember. So on this Sunday morning before Remembrance Day on Wednesday, November the 11th, 
we must first remember the many Canadians who have faithfully served our beloved nation over the last 152 years within the various branches of our military. Yet in particular, on this Sunday morning, I would encourage us to respectfully remember the 118,000 Canadians who experienced the ultimate sacrifice of death while serving our country in uniform. You perhaps have families or friends who paid the ultimate price. As I was driving through that snowstorm yesterday morning to get to Kingsway Mall, and it was really coming down, wasn't it? I thought to myself, yeah, I get to spend a number of hours with a good friend, and I get to be able to distribute these poppies as a remembrance of those that paid the ultimate price. And I have to, I have to admit that as I drove, I was thinking of my Uncle Elmer, who was part of the Royal Canadian Army, the artillery unit, and was killed in action on October 26, 1944, during the Battle of Scheldt. And I thought to myself, this is the least that I can do, is drive through a snowstorm. The least I can do to be able to say, thank you. And I remember, we remember, those that have given of themselves. We must remember that the blood-soaked and blood uh, stained patriots that came before us gave themselves up because of what? Because of their conviction that the precious core beliefs and values embraced and enjoyed by millions of Canadians were under threat. And they believed, all 118,000 of them, that their humble but heroic actions, no matter how large, seen, seen or unseen, or small, that... Uh, that through their efforts, that it would make in some way a significant difference in the future for our futures and that of our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren. But as I've been thinking of this this morning and as I was preparing my heart for this throughout the week, I, I thought to myself, but it's up to you, it's up to me to ensure that their passion of protecting and preserving the finest of the Canadian soul be continuously uh, realized and advanced into the future. So today, as well as on Remembrance Day and well into the future, I'm calling all of us here this morning that are here at Taylor Seminary, those that are viewing online, I'm calling for us to remember and to acknowledge the courage and the honor and the sacrifice of those who have served and died for our nation. And that we reaffirm and recommit ourselves to uphold the very best of who and what our nation stands for. Not the least, but the very best of who we are under God. And that we work for the peace that so many have died to achieve. Many of my Legion friends and as a Padre chaplain within the Legion, I never hear any of them that have served actively or been in conflict about the glories of war. I have never heard one say that. I only say and hear them say, we work that people might be able to live peaceably. They're not warmongers. They're people who are willing to put their lives on the line so that you and I can live peaceably in the years to come. And so today, as well as on Remembrance Day and well into the future, could we, could we continue to reaffirm and recommit ourselves to uphold the best of who we are as Canadians? Yet on this Sunday, before Remembrance Day, we must also, I believe, remember those who have given their lives for us who never wore a uniform or carried a gun. <laughs> Reading in Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 through 17 this past week, 
Revelation chapter 7, verse 9 through 17. And take opportunity to read it this week. It's, what, it's an amazing picture. And we read in that passage of Scripture of those who wash their robes in the blood of the Lamb. I know you've read it and you're familiar, but I was struck again as I've been thinking of remembrance that there are those who wash their robes in the blood of the Lamb. Among these are those, as we see from that passage of Scripture, who had given their lives in service, not to a nation like Canada, but to Jesus Christ, the Son of the Almighty God, the Father above. And there have been hundreds of thousands of such sacrifices throughout the ages. In fact, as church history records for us in the 16th century, just to cite one example in particular, there was a tragic and bloody purge of followers of Jesus Christ, of Christians in Scotland. Sadly, thousands, as history records for us, thousands upon thousands of pastors and ministers of the gospel and laypersons suffered, gave of themselves for Christ's sake. Many were hung in cold blood, while other believers endured the torture of being burned at the stake and being beheaded. We can hardly even imagine that that occurred just over 400 years ago. That's not really a long time in history. And yet that's what they found themselves in, one such follower of Jesus Christ was a 24-year-old named Patrick Hamilton who was sentenced to death for his faith in Jesus Christ. And as he was tied to the stake and the fire was beginning to nip at his feet, he pulled off his outer garments and he handed them to an individual close by and said to them in these words, these will not profit me in the fire. <laughs> Pretty practical kind of guy. Better not make this uh, go to waste. You, you should have it. I'm not going to need it. You can hear him saying. And, uh, and even as he did, uh, we are told that he was taunted by one of his persecutors to deny God, to recant his faith in Jesus Christ. But it was at that very moment that he answered with these now famous words, O wicked man, Thou knowest that I am not at guilt, and that is the truth of God for which I now suffer. Wow. And as the fire continued to burn, that young Christian martyr called out these final words. How long, O Lord, how long, O Lord, shall darkness overwhelm this, this, uh, this realm? How long wilt thou suffer this tyranny of man? And as he was being finally consumed by the flames, he prayed like the biblical Stephen, Lord Jesus, receive now my spirit. Lord Jesus, receive now my spirit. And while today we, we earnestly and thankfully remember those who have served our beautiful country and we've paid them homage today and who have died doing it. We also remember from the landscape of history that there were dedicated and have been dedicated and devout followers of the Lord Jesus Christ like this Patrick Hamilton for they died in battle too. The battle between light and darkness, between godliness and evil. And can I, because history can seem like a long ways away and has no impact upon our lives today, can I challenge us all that we dare not forget them, but we, that we stand on their spiritual shoulders so that those who come behind us will be inspired to stand on our spiritual shoulders and see the faith of Jesus Christ bring hope and peace to a hurting and divided world. The older I get, the more I recognize that I have a responsibility as a follower of Jesus Christ to live my 
life with integrity every single day. Because there is a generation that is younger than I that are watching my life. They're watching our lives. And we are to live in such a manner that they can stand on our shoulders and move forward into the future with faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because we live in a world that needs to know Jesus Christ as Savior, as Lord, as Shepherd, as Healer, as Reconciler, as the Prince of Peace, the Mighty God, the Counselor, the Comforter, the One who comes to bring us together. I have talked with many people in recent days who are concerned of the times in which we live. And rightly so. But I've also been trying to remind myself and them that God is sovereign. That God is in control. And his will and his way shall be done. Let us not be gripped by the fear and of the perilous times. But let's put our hope in Jesus Christ who holds the times. No man, no woman can reconcile the times, but only God who's in control. So let's live with confidence and not out of fear. Let us live with hope and not out of despair. Let us live with purpose and not with a sense of aimlessness. For we are the children of the living God. We have a destiny. We have a purpose. And we have the ability through the power of the Holy Spirit to live out our lives day to day where he's placed us to plant the cross in the marketplace that Christ would be uplifted, that his name would be exalted, that he would draw all men unto himself and that they would know. Let's not despair, friends. The devil isn't in control. God is. God is. Let's not forget it. Let's live according to the word and let our lives be an example of the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's stand on the shoulders of those that have sacrificed themselves, who lived through tumultuous times, even greater than what we're living through today, and yet found themselves faithful to the Lord. And 400 years later, we're talking about them in church today. Their names haven't vanished from the history books. And let us take up the torch. Let's live day to day in the small ways, in the large ways, in the unseen ways. Let's be faithful. And those, if the Lord should tarry his coming, who come behind us, that they will stand on our spiritual shoulders with their hands lifted up in exaltation to Jesus Christ. We remember those that have stood for the faith. And lastly, there is one more that we need to remember today. And it is the Lamb himself. The Lamb slain before the foundations of the world. For as the Apostle John so beautifully reminds us in John 3.16, you know it's so many that have been raised in the church but let me say it again, because it's, it's like the manifesto of the church of Jesus Christ, of the gospel that we have placed our hope in through Jesus Christ. For God did what? He loved the world. Even the ones that aren't lovable. <laughs> For God so loved the world that he what gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have the gift of abundant and everlasting life. And my dear friends, this morning, as we remember the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, God, the Father's only Son, as spoken of in the Gospel of John, I love what the songwriter Stuart Town additionally reminds us of. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, Firm though the fiercest drought and storm with heights of love, what depths of peace when fears are stilled, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ, 
I stand in Christ alone who took on flesh, fullness of God and helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied, for every sin on him was laid. Here in the death, Christ, I live. There in the ground, his body lay, because the good part's coming. Light of the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he arose again, and as he stands in victory today, sin's curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death, this is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here, Heritage Valley, we stand in the power of of Christ alone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, we love you today. We thank you for your death. We thank you for your sacrifice, for we stand in you alone. And so, my dear friends, this morning, on the Sunday of Remembrance Day week, we remember, we remember 118,000 precious Canadians who died that we, we might live in freedom. We remember the thousands upon thousands of brothers and sisters in Christ down through the centuries and even today who are being persecuted in nations and countries where there is no freedom of faith, who didn't wear a uniform, didn't carry a weapon, but died that we might live in faith. And we remember Christ who died that we might live fruitfully on earth and forever in heaven. And we remember with sadness and yet with gratitude the sacrifices others have made on our behalf. But now, but now my dear friends, this morning we go forth. Let's go forth from this place. This day not in defeat, not in despair, not with a spirit of fear. But let's go forth from this place in a sense and with victory in our hearts. Victories that have been secured by the fallen down through the years. Let's live. Let's live freely. Let's live faithfully. Let's live fruitfully. Now and forever. For the glory of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Father God, we thank you this morning. That on this Sunday before Remembrance Week. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We are assembled in Taylor Seminary here at Heritage Valley Assembly. Those that are gathered with us online by way of YouTube and Facebook. We thank you for the 118,000 who have paid the ultimate sacrifice that we might live in freedom. May we never forget, least we forget. But Father God, we also are reminded that there are those that never wore a uniform, never carried a weapon, and yet we're in a battle for light and dark for good God and evil and Satan and, and we're faithful to God even on to death. Most of us have never been called or perhaps maybe never will be called to that kind of sacrifice. But on this Remembrance Sunday, we remember them. We stand on their shoulders, those that have come before us. A church triumphant, not defeated. 
for the gates of hell shall not prevail against God. We thank you that the church is alive and is well. Our future is bright, it's glorious, it's mighty, it's powerful. Help us not to shrink back out of fear. Help us to move forward with wisdom and with joy and with a sense of purpose as we, the Church of Jesus Christ, wherever you place to stay today, that we share the love of Jesus Christ. As Jesus said, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, and soul, and your neighbor as yourself. Help us to love God and our neighbor. And Father, if you should tarry your coming, may we conduct ourselves in such a manner day in and day out that our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, our friends, our colleagues, our neighbors will be able to say, I stand on your shoulders. Thank you for, thank you for sacrifice. Thank you for allowing us to live faithfully. Now, Jesus, we reserved the most important thanks to you on this day of remembrance. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Even as we've been studying the book of Philippians chapter 2, you've reminded us that you came from your glorious place of splendor in heaven and came and took on the form of a servant. And even as Paul writes in that second chapter, even as obedience to death. But as he goes on to write, not just to death, but resurrection, for you're alive and well. And every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. One day, one day, not just in our own individual lives today, but one day, all of the world will have to stand and kneel before you and confess that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Until that day, we commit ourselves afresh this Sunday morning as the sons and daughters of the living God to honor the sacrifice of Jesus. For in Christ alone, we stand. Allow us to remain faithful before you. We thank you now. Receive, receive us, we pray. And we'll give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Jeff, would you come and lead us, my dear brother? From the ends of the earth, of the earth from the depths of the sea, from the, of the sea, from the heights of the heavens, of the heavens your name be praised from the hearts of the weak. From the height, uh, shouts of the strong, shouts of the strong, from the lips of all people, people this, this song we raise, Lord, throughout the endless ages, you will be crowned with praises, Lord, most high, exalted. Sovereign of all creation, Lord, most high, be magnified. Can you stand, please? From the ends of the earth, from the depths of the sea, from the heights of the heaven, your name be from the hearts of the weak, from the shouts of the strong, 
from the lips of all people. This song we raise, Lord, throughout the endless ages. You will be crowned with praises, Lord, most high. Sucked in every nation, sovereign of all creation, Lord, most high. Be magnified throughout the endless ages. Throughout the endless ages. You will be crowned with praises, Lord, most high. Exalted in every nation, sovereign of all creation, Lord, most high. Be magnified. As we dismiss this morning, would you take a moment to honor those that have served in our military, been associated with them today? Would you take time to honor Jill, who has served? Would you take time to say thank you to Harold, to his family for serving? Would you take time to chat with Bill, who was associated with our military in Germany and served very faithfully? There may be others here today, but would you take a moment and just say thank you before we go? Would you do that? I know you will. Would you raise your hands as we receive the blessing of the Lord this morning as we go? We remember, Lord, we remember, we remember, we remember those who have lived and died for our freedom. We remember those in the church of Jesus Christ down through the annals of history who have been faithful to the gospel of Jesus Christ and we owe them. We are here today because of their faithfulness. And Lord Jesus, we remember your sacrifice on the cross. And if there be any, even one here this morning or those that may be viewing who have never received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, have never, have never actualized the work of Christ's death and resurrection in their lives and asking them to be Savior and Lord and Sovereign. There may be some that are gripped by fear and wondering what the future holds for their lives. May they be reassured today as they receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, just very simply where they are, repenting of their sins, asking Him to come into their lives, that He will lead and guide them no matter what comes. God will hold them in His steady hand. We pray that they would be open to receiving you this day. We pray for them and commit them into your care. And Father, Lord Jesus, as we remember Diane today, Diane DeYoung, we pray that you will continue to strengthen her and her physical body. May her recovery from this heart attack be so significant that even her heart surgeons and the cardiac specialists who have served her in their way up to this day will be able to stand back and say, there's someone greater than we. <laughs> that there's healing of that heart and full restoration of physical strength in her life. We pray for John as well who's in hospital today. May Lord God, you continue to restore him in his physical body, continue to encourage he and his family in spirit May, may they be exhorted and encouraged in you and strengthened today. Now, my dear friends, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the grace of Jesus Christ be upon you. And may you go forward with the peace of God that passes all understanding. And in the power of Jesus Christ. And we'll give you all the thanks. We'll give you all the praise. For you are worthy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Greet one another. Don't run away. Don't be too quick to run away. Linger back. Fellowship together. Would you do that? God bless you. Drive safely as you return home.
God bless you.